Hey, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ivan. Here's my lovely face. Um, I've never felt like I'm the unpopular guy in the room, but I'm definitely the one today. Um, I've spent most of my career on the JVM, so don't hate on me, please. Um, in order to earn your respect, I'm going to say that in the past couple of months I've been writing in Elixir, so <laughs> please don't hate me. Right, another thing that I have to say is that I get extremely nervous speaking in public, obviously. Uh, my mouth gets dry, I hate it. So, um, <laughs> uh, just let's roll with it. Um, 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 I also appreciate the fact that uh, you've spent all day here, so it's probably a long day. I'm going to try and make it this quick. So, I work at SumUp. Uh, if you are keen on and interested on uh, getting to know what we do, come speak to us. There's quite a lot of us here, so come say hi. Okie doke. So, functional programming in Java. Um, again, the unpopular topic, uh, but I'll try and show you guys what um, our main problems have been and how we can solve them using a more modern technology like Kotlin and a functional programming that has been written for Kotlin called ROKT. So we're going to go through a very simple uh, study case, let's put it that way. Uh, we want to build this uh, endpoint and the name I've chosen is a very special gift from me to all the Bulgarians in the audience. Uh, no one else will get it. Okay, so we're doing a get request to uh, uh, the slash users slash ID endpoint, and we expect that the server will give us a user. The first version of our implementation will be uh, using Spring with Java. Spring, obviously, the most popular choice in the Java community, so we're going with it. Okie doke. Spring Data uh, gives us this um, repository interface. Uh, in this case, it's a CRUD repository. Inside of it, uh, we get a method called findById, which gives us an optional. So I can just extend this interface and I will get all the things that I need to access my data from, th from the database for free at runtime. I don't need to worry about anything else. All I need to do is provide my entity type and what ID it has as a primary key. So that's it for data access. In the service layer, I obviously need to uh, inject this uh, bad boy of a repository that I just created and I can then use its find by ID method, map it to a user DTO because I don't want to be leaking my domain objects to the outside world and I end up with this signature um, where I get a an ID of type long, and I'm returning an optional of user DTO. Now, optional is a very controversial topic in, in the Java community. Um, it was introduced to fight the nullability problem in the Java type system. And it does look like a monad, and I promised to myself that I'm not going to use the M word today, but I, I think I'll use it once more. This is the first time. So it looks like a monad, but it isn't because it breaks the monad laws under certain conditions. And it has some other problems. Anyway, this whole thing um, led to a very low adoption rate. So I've decided that I'm not going to expose optional as my interface here. So I'm going back to a simple user DTO. The only thing that I need to do is obviously return null in case there isn't a user with such an ID in my database. 
okie doke. Now, this leaves my client in a bit of a pickle because they need to start doing um, null checks. They, they wouldn't know what to do. What if I have other types of errors and more complex business logic inside this method? I can't communicate those. So I'm going to do what most people would do in my case. And by most people, I mean most Java developers. They would throw. OK? Now, what this gives us is a very descriptive error, but a very radical approach to solving our problem. Right? Uh, you ask for a, you come to me and ask me for a user. But there is no such user, so I kill your thread. It's, it's kind of hateful. Um, <laughs> anyways, this is my <laughs> final version. I'm going to just roll with it. Uh, for my client, which in this case is the user's controller, this is where I define my endpoint. Um, what the whole thing means is that Again, I'll be injecting my user service, and Spring will help me with that as well. Um, what I need to do is just return 200 OK with whatever uh, DTO my service gives me. Okie doc, what do I do in case there isn't a user with that ID? How do I handle my error? Well, it's so common to be throwing exceptions around that the chaps from Spring created a controller advice component. This is something which allows you to catch any exceptions from anywhere in your code and instruct your framework what to return to your REST client. So in this case, oh, in this case, that's the right slide, cool. You can see that I'm telling the framework to handle any entity not found exceptions, so I'm giving it the type, with a 404. And I give it a nice message taken from the exception. What does this look like? And I'm going to go back just to prove my case. But this here leads to this code. This is like a go-to operator, which we stopped writing, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago. It's just ridiculous. So I don't want to be doing that, obviously, or breaks my uh, flow when I can't read the code in one place. I need to jump from file to file. It just doesn't work for me. So let's see how Kotlin can help us solve this. Uh, back in 2017, I think, Spring announced that they absolutely love Kotlin. So <laughs> um, they started writing extensions. Um, they announced uh, tremendous support for the language, which is true. I mean, uh, Kotlin compiles down to Java bytecode, which means that any library written in Java is also compatible with Kotlin and vice versa. So there we go. Um, Spring loves Kotlin. One of the extensions they wrote is this bad boy on the CRUD repository, find by ID or null. Now, notice here that I'm getting a nullable type T which is much better than the type system in Java. Now, my compiler and my clients know that I can expect a null there. Okie doke. For myself, as a, as a Spring user, this doesn't change much. I still extend the CRUD repository, and I'm done. Okay, data access done. User service, I still inject my user repository on the first line over there. Now I use the find by ID or now function and I map it to a user DTL, same as before. But I'm also returning a nullable type user of user DTL. 
this helps things a little bit. Now the compiler knows it's nullable, my clients know it's nullable, so it's, it's kind of cool. But I'm losing that descriptive error message. Again, what if I had a more complex business logic? What if I had five cases where I can error out? I can't communicate this. Anyways, this is what I have at the moment. So uh, going back to our controller, uh, mapping. So question mark, do, who knows here? Co knows, oh, who here knows Kotlin? Show of hands, please. No one. Few people. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. A few people. So this question mark dot means that it's a no safe operator, basically. If something is nullable, the compiler forces you to think about what happens if this value is null. In this case, if it isn't null, um, I'm going to go and return a four, uh, 200 OK. And the Elvis operator in Kotlin is the, so what happens if something is null, OK? Um, in this case, the error, I'm just going to assume it's what I think it is because I don't really know unless I go and read the, the, the source code of the service method. So I return 404. Cool. Kind of better, but not ideal. Here comes arrow. Um, ROKT is just a functional companion to Kotlin's standard library. They've got a few modules. ROCore is one of them. Um, it brings things like either the validated option. Uh, it has a few nice extensions to the iterable interface in Kotlin as well. Um, so let's focus on either and how it can help us with error handling. Okie doke. So it's a genericized class, obviously. Um, on the left goes anything that's an error or a context. On the right goes what's right, if that makes sense. So if you expect a value, it will go on the right. Your context goes on the left. That's it. It can either be there or not be there. Alrighty, as it's a sealed class, I can't directly instantiate it. I need to choose whether I want a left or I want a right. So it can't be both at the same time. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. So how do I use this? Um, I'll declare a variable called in this case, right? Um, it will either be a string or an int, and I decide to assign it a write of one. Um, the compiler won't let me put anything else um, apart from an int there, because it knows that it can't be anything else. This is helpful. Uh, because it's write biased, map and flat map functions work with the right value always. So in this case, I'll get a uh, right of six. Again, right biased. So if it's a left value, the map here won't be computed at all. It will go straight, straight to the map left function. Okay, doc. how do I get my value that I'm interested in? Let's imagine I have a function like this one, where I return either a string or an int. I've got two simple options. I can either provide a default value that I'd like to use, and now the compiler would know that it will be a non-nullable int. Or if I don't have a default value to put there, I just don't know what to do, I can resort to get or no. 
we're kind of missing the opportunity here to inspect what the error is. We don't know anything about the context. So I'd rather use pattern matching to um, to get my value. So I can do when this thing is right to do this, when this thing is left to do this, or I can fold the either and fold the fold function accepts two um, functions. The first one, I'm dealing with the error case. So it will give me the context and I can do something with it. The other one, the second one, will give me the, vo the value I'm interested in, in case there is one. Okie doke. So that's our role. Let me see how we can use it. Um, back to our user service. This is the last version of it. Uh, we are returning a nullable user DTO. Now I want to get rid of that and I want to provide some context for my clients, so I'm returning an either. All I need to do is use another extension function which turns anything into an either right. This is what right does. In case my user repo repository gives me a null, I'll just say this string dot left, which means it will be a left of whatever the string is. There we go. This isn't enough for me though. Mm. A string isn't descriptive enough of what the error is. So I'm just going to introduce a little something here. I'm going to create my own interface of with a with a like an enumerated list of what my service can give me as an error in this case it's just not found but you can add all kinds of things in there which will allow the client to then pattern match on the error and know exactly what what's going wrong okay so I'm changing the signature of get by ID to return either the service error or a user DTO. And all I need to change then is just the last line. And I'll return a, a left of not found. Okie doke. So how have things changed for my controller? Again, I'm choosing to fold the either. And you can already see that I can I can read everything in one place. I don't need to go to different files. It's just it's all there. If I have more errors, they'll go in this clause here, in this when state, in this when expression rather. Um, and I know exactly what's going wrong. In case everything's okay, just return to hundred. Okay. Okay, dog. Thanks very much. I managed to do this in 20 minutes, so thank you for that. Um, any questions, maybe? Yes, a couple. Superb. Uh, hello. Uh, does the when expression is it? Um, does it do exhaustiveness checking? Like if? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. The compiler thank works for you in the case of Kotlin. Right, so uh, on, unfortunately on occasion I have had to uh, write Java. Uh, or I'm sorry, Co sorry about that, case. yeah. So <laughs> one thing that we uh, stumbled on sort of in trying to do this was that once, once Java gets hold of generics, it kind of basically erases all of the information uh, and it doesn't necessarily keep it around even when you know what you're holding on to and so on in some cases. Uh, and you, ha you end up using reified uh, type variables. Maybe you, um, you know about these. So well, what I was wondering is this machinery here presumably is written in Kotlin so it has access to reifying these type variables, right? Keep them, keeping them around basically uh, and so on. 
is it resistant to, for example, if you were using this with Java libraries, is it resistant to this kind of erasure, type erasure? Uh, is your question, can I use Arrow in Java code? Well, does it sort of, uh, let's say, because from my understanding, if we're always in Kotlin code, we mm -hmm. can keep the type variables around. We can keep the, the generic information around, right? But once we enter Java land, all bets are off. It's just like, yeah, I lost it on the way. Um, so is this kind of resistant to that? Do they do something in particular with this? No, it it isn't, it's impossible, right? So oh, you you get enough. this runtime erasure in Java, so you yeah. can't get around it, basically. Yeah, okay, fa yeah. fair enough. Yeah, just wanted to check. Okie doke. Thanks very much. Thank you. Ciao.